This is my broken iPhone 12 mini. And this is the replacement display and battery that I purchased from Apple. And this is the 97 pounds of tools that I need in order to do the repair the way Apple says it needs to be done. Okay, so in case number one, which is the small Pelican case, if you can believe it, we've got, okay, this is the uh, heated display press. Oh, it actually, there you go. It's tool contents of what goes where, so you can be sure where to put that back when you return it. You've got a packing list that just says, this is case one, I've got a return label, and then instructions on, you know, what to do. Even though I had to read the whole manual before they'd even let me order this thing. Okay, so there's the heated display press. That thing's pretty heavy. We've got the, okay, so this is the actual heating element tray um, where we insert the phone and it heats up the sides uh, to loosen the adhesive uh, around the display. Um, this is in contrast to a lot of aftermarket stuff where you put the display face down and it just heats up the whole kind of display. I'm assuming this is more targeted heating for the actual uh, adhesive, so that's cool. And then, Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is just an this is just an iMac cable. <laughs> they didn't want to give you, a, you know. I guess you get the fancy, fancy. They're not going to give you a crappy cable. That's hilarious. That's this is literally an iMac cable. Bizarre. Okay, and uh, then we've got our two little. Uh, things that we use to return the device. So, yeah. Okay, I wanna see what's in this one because this is really freaking heavy. <laughs> this is the big Pelican case. Oh my gosh, oh, there's side ones, wow. Very secure. Oh, wow. Okay, so right here on the side, oh, we've got our nice torque drivers. These are Wera. Um, Apple uses Wera in their stores. They used to use Wea. And now they use Wera. I know that because of the design. I'm a big Wera fanboy. Excellent tools, not cheap, but really, really good. Okay, over here, it looks like we've got an adhesive cutting tool. This is for the um, adhesive press, which I think is this thing. We've got a couple suction cups. Uh, one of these little tools you can get from Alibaba for three cents. And then, so even Apple uses cheap tools. And then we've got our uh, display covers to protect the front and back glass, okay? Then we've got the return tags. We've got documentation. This is our little work tray. Interesting. It looks like aluminum, but that's not. I don't know if it's Delrin or something. It's been machined, milled. Fascinating, okay. So we've got that. This is our battery press, which we'll demo. Basically this tray sits in there somewhere. Yeah, something like that, sure. There you go. And then slides back and forth. And then this, oh my golly, this is what's heavy. This is the actual display press. So you pull this down and a little timer starts. Interesting, that's battery powered. One thing I've noted on all of these is there are factory seals out the wazoo. <laughs> Apple really does not want you opening their tools, even though you can buy them. So, uh, do we open them? Maybe. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you wanna see. Deconstructing Apple's tools. This one's crazy. I am just in awe by how much crap there is to replace what is effectively a battery and display on a smartphone. And frankly, this is anti-right to repair in the sense that this is very environmentally destructive. I mean, this is a hundred pounds worth of stuff that you're shipping back and forth to fix this. And like we mentioned in the last video, it's not even less expensive. And you still assume all of the liability by doing the repair on your own. 
And it's for this reason that your local repair shop or options like today's sponsor, Asurian Tech Repair and Solutions and You Break I Fix are way better because not only are those professional repairs done by professionals that are guaranteed as such, but they're often cheaper than this. <laughs> so check out the link in the description below to find a store near you or learn more at Asurian.com. But let's get into the repair itself, starting with removing the display, I guess. Okay, so the tools are cool, but let's check out the parts themselves. We've got two white boxes here, a packing list, and then, okay, so this is display adhesive. They give you two of these in case you mess up, so that's nice. And then you've got two security screws. Okay, so here is the, I don't know what this is. We'll open it up. Okay, so this is the battery. So here's the screws associated with that. That's nice, they come in a nice little cardboard sleeve. They're all uh, lined out, which is handy. We've got the battery itself and it's riding on this little plastic shield, which will help us for ideal alignment as well as the adhesive. And then in this one, that means we have the display. And sure enough, yep, same deal. So we've got a little screw kit here. Nice, that's very Apple-like actually. And then here, we've got the display itself. So it's got a nice plastic wrap on it. And yeah, that's just the, the bare OLED panel and digitizer. Holy smokes. It is unbelievable how, thin, how thin these things have gotten. I've mostly uh, repaired LCD iPhones. And so you forget how thin OLED is. That's quite wild. Okay, cool. So as we mentioned, this display removal tool uses heat, but it also uses suction to remove the display from the phone. It's hard to achieve a seal when your glass is broken. So they've included this handy little, wow, that's very ugly. <laughs> this sticker that you place onto the phone, uh, and this sticks to all of the broken shards of glass. I'm assuming it's extremely sticky. That was very crooked. Oh well, hopefully that's not an issue. And then that will allow us to achieve a seal with the suction cup. Okay, using the world's worst screen shield, we need to turn the phone off. And then we are going to place it into this tray. So the phone just slides right in and then it actually clamps on. Oh wow, that's, that is a strong clamp. Clamps right onto the phone. We're then going to take it and slide it in. Oh, first we have to turn the machine on. I guess I should probably read the directions, huh? Let's uh, let's look at our guide here. It says to wait for a check mark, which there is. Okay. Wow, that fan is very annoying. And now we gently insert the iPhone into the heated pocket. Yeah, we already did this. We're experts. And it does appear to be heating. So a little temperature readout. <laughs> it says it takes two minutes. So I'm guessing that, uh, well, there could be thermistors in here. I bet there are, I probably shouldn't touch it, huh? But I'm guessing this temperature readout is just based on time. So once we've got that, this is the world's most annoying fan. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. Oh, now it times. Ah, oh, so maybe it was just heating up? I don't know. Dude, the fan curve on this thing is unbelievably weird. <laughs> okay, 20 seconds. I guess I should figure out what to do. <laughs> um, I have to lower this, it looks like, almost all the way to the bottom, and then I'll slide the suction cup up, uh, align it with the display, tighten the suction cup, and then I slowly twist in the other direction to uh, pull the display and the chassis apart. It says that if it doesn't happen immediately, to wait 30 seconds. I wonder if that's to heat soak it. Oh my gosh. Is it gonna do this the whole time? Okay, all right, calm down. So we'll lower the cup down, but not let it touch. That's pretty close. Okay, now we slide this out, align it with the edge of the display. Don't wanna go too far. Wow, that's not a very good slider. That's probably not far enough. There we go. That's the same spot. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, now we push it down. That's definitely on the phone. We're gonna clamp it to create the suction. And now I'm gonna start twisting in the opposite direction. And it's not separating. <laughs> so do we need to wait 30 seconds? Wait 30 seconds. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh baby, look at this. We're getting some separation there. Ooh, that really does not want to come so much. Okay, so let's grab our little cutting tool here. And we're just gonna slightly go around the perimeter and cut that adhesive down here at the bottom. Here's what, here's what they need to give you, another tool. Cause you need to, there we go. Okay, there we go, that's what you needed. Apple, that's how you gotta modify your instructions. Cause you can't trust the weight of a little sissy suction cup. Now it says flip the handle to release the suction cup, but don't worry, cause that sucked anyway. So lift this up and then we're going to push this release knob, pull the phone out. Ooh, that is pretty toasty. And then we're gonna pull this pocket out. We grab the display by the top so that we don't re-adhere everything. We'll shut off this very annoying machine. And then I think we place it into our new mold. Oh wow, that's extremely tight. Nice. So now I have to get the top adhesive off. It says slide the bottom of the phone towards you slightly as you insert the edge of the adhesive cutter. This is not hot at all, by the way. So that, that thing must not get too toasty. Yeah, see that is like completely stuck. It's just not hot enough. I'm taking a creative liberty on the manual. Are you ready? Go. Okay, so the display is pretty much chowdered. I've even actually delaminated the OLED from the frame a little bit, as you can tell. I think the problem is that the heat press just doesn't quite heat everything up enough. But finally, I do have access and everything seems to be intact, which is good. So I'm gonna take my two suction cups right here. I'm gonna place them in this pocket and you'd think they'd lower or something. Nope, the solution is just pick this up and stick it. <laughs> okay then. So I, now I need to remove these EMI covers. This screw is a micro sticks, uh, also known as a tri-wing screw. Okay, so our battery is now disconnected. So we'll use the black stick again to lift the end of the display flex cable. So that's this one. And just go right there. Okay. And the receiver flex cable. It's kind of nice that they tell you what each one does. So that was to display. Here's the receiver. So that's done. Easy. So there's our old display. You can see that it is just chowdered and like, you know, it's bent out the wazoo. There's no structural rigidity. And that's what I had some issue with. Do not touch the true depth camera, the grounding pins or any nearby parts. This is actually legitimately a very sensitive area and you need to be careful. Unfortunately, as you might be able to tell, I have quite a lot of crap around here. Even though this has never had a display replacement, you know, enough time and dirt and dust, especially near the top where it's at the bottom of a pocket, it's just filling with crap. And we're gonna have to remove that in order to get the adhesive to reapply. So we're gonna have to be particularly mindful of the True Depth camera system while we're up there. Anytime you go and get your display repaired and they say, oh, it's gonna take about an hour. What they really mean is that it's gonna take about five minutes to do everything except for the adhesive, which will take about an hour. <laughs> it just, you have to be so slow or it breaks and it's just stupid, but that is how we have waterproof phones. So I guess you win some, you lose some. Nice, done, kind of, except for I have some fragments I need to clean up. Yeah, there's just so much crap on the sides that you're gonna need to clean off in order to get a nice fit on the new adhesive. Two words of advice, do not get isopropyl alcohol inside your cut. And <laughs> when you're down in these sections with pogo pins, so this is for the uh, microphone and this is for the speaker, you gotta be really, really, really careful because they are fragile, they do not like to be bent, and they'll usually only bend back in place maybe once if you're lucky. It's like the Pixar Sim. 
Boop. That took forever. Now that we've got the display, we need to reinstall it. But let's not forget, we've got a battery replacement. Use ESD Safe tweezers to grasp the bottom right battery adhesive tab and gently peel it from the battery. Now we're gonna pull at a 45 degree angle and you twist as you pull at that 45 degree angle. Come on, buddy. Don't snap on me. Don't, it snapped on me. Okay, so we broke two of the four strips. That's not entirely uncommon, especially if the phone has been exposed to excessive heat. It tends to kind of degrade over time. Um, if you've broken all four of them, you're just done. <laughs> but if you've, if you've got at least one of them out, and we have two, then you are in luck. You grab this black little stick and you basically jam it underneath the battery in the enclosure to try and slowly pry it up. However, you need to be very careful that you don't bend the battery too much because it can puncture and burn. And then there's also this big, sketchy, scary section where you're not allowed to stick this at all because there's flex cables and cheek coils and all sorts of stuff. So you gotta stay out of the naughty zone and insert it into the following sections just enough to lift it up. So we've got uh, full movement here on the bottom of our, of our phone. So we should be okay there. Maybe I didn't get all of this adhesive. This is pretty sticky. So look at that. That's crazy. So <laughs> I was only able to get up very little, even though it felt like a lot. Uh, I got the pull strip out of the right side, but there's still a lot of adhesive that was on there. Half of the left strip, left strip was left, and then almost all of the top was available. So it's just really hard to get these out. Luckily, as long as you don't puncture the battery, you should be fine. Okay, so we've got that old surface prepped nice and well. So we're gonna grab our new battery here. It's time to install this bad boy. We'll take our old battery, put it back in here, and return this to Apple for a small credit. Now, because my hands are now sweaty and clammy from all that fine work, and because I want uh, everything to look nice when I finally reassemble the phone, I'm going to put on some gloves, and I would suggest you do the same. The manual does as well. All right, so this whole process is supposed to be pretty easy. Step one is to remove the pink adhesive cover from the battery, which we've done. And then we simply take this cover and align it with the top and left sides of our logic board. So I'm gonna do this kind of at an angle and right there. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, then we lower the battery into the enclosure and it should be good to go. So now we have to actually get the adhesive to stick and that's where this tool comes in. So we're gonna take our tray, we're gonna place it into this battery tool right there. And then once we've done that, we lower the tool down and there's a fair bit of pressure there. You can see it's spring loaded. And now we merely roll the tray forwards and backwards three times. Good thing we had this tool. That could not be achieved with a couple of fingers. <laughs> I don't really, okay. I don't really know if that was strictly necessary, but great, okay. And now our tray should be loose and it is perfect. New battery installed. Okay, now it's time to install the display, plug the battery back in, and then we seal it back up. But first, before we do that, we need to put the actual display adhesive on. Now they give you two of these, presumably in case you mess up, but given how I just spent a ton of time removing all of the adhesive, I really hope that I don't mess up. So, okay. This has all been IPA'd and ready to go. So as we stick the adhesive down into the enclosure, we're gonna pull this off and hopefully, not touching the true depth camera system, it should release into the cavities properly. And yeah, that looks pretty dang awesome. Good, okay. So now, actually before anything, we grab this little tool, this little heart. You have to align the heart and the heart here. And if you look at this, you can actually tell that it matches <laughs> exactly the adhesive around the area. So it's gonna put pressure just onto the adhesive. And there's a notch as well to remind you where to align it, as well as the heart, which is so cute. I love the heart. It makes Apple feel like they care and they love me, which they don't. Okay, 
I'm now going to position the repair tray into the press, which I can do by placing it on the two spikes. And there we go. Okay, it's not moving around now. And then all I do is pull down the display lever. Okay, you ready? Here we go. I should probably do it this way. Oh, that's quite a bit of pressure. Okay, and a timer starts, 30 seconds on the clock. When the timer goes up, I have to pull out this lever as I push down and then it'll slowly go back up. That's really annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna push down, pull this out, let that up. And there you go. This is the first tool of the day that actually seems necessary. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. The other ones I have not been super impressed by. Pull this up. There we go. The adhesive comes right off. Good. Okay. And now we pull it section number two. I guess this is just one continuous piece. Okay. Then it goes to section number three. And lastly, the top does not appear to be connected with anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. Okay, we need to leave this so that we don't get crap stuck on the adhesive when we're reinstalling the display. So, we're gonna put the suction cups back in, all reliable. I can't believe that's how it actually works, that's silly. Okay, I'll line this up. I'm going to gently push it onto the suction cups. That's kind of scary with a brand new OLED. And these connectors, you kind of just line them up and then you push them down with their fing your finger. If they snap in, you got it right. If they don't snap in, you don't got it right. Okay, success on number one. Success with the display cable. Number two is in. And now last we have the battery cable. Oh, that didn't. Uh -huh. I'm first going to take this shield and with the tweezers they recommend because you've got to kind of anchor it in. You anchor this shield in because it's only got a screw on one side. See this? So we've got our adhesive right here. And there's one tiny little screw that I can push onto my driver. And this is where torque drivers are cool. You ready? So I'm going to push this into the hole. And people know, often ask, well, how tight does it need to go? And all you have to do is spin it until it clicks. That's it. You're done. Okay. So now we've got this upper shield that we're going to fit into place. And the same situation. We pull up this cover. It reveals all of the screws and they match the pattern on the shield, which is so freaking nice. That's a really smart way to do it. I'm assuming they do that in the Apple stores as well, but I don't really know, but that's handy. These are so tiny. Like the last phones I, re uh, I repaired frequently were the iPhone 7. And let me tell you, the screws in that phone were monstrous by comparison. Okay, so now we're just gonna torque them all down. Good. Good. Now it's time to place the display back down and press all four corners of the display simultaneously. So let's remove this cup, remove this cup, get these suction cups out of the way. And now being very careful to make sure that we don't fold over any of our cables because that can happen and it's not good, trust me. Okay, looks like we're good there. It just says take the four corners and push down simultaneously. Okay, and that says ensure that there isn't flex in the edges, which there's not. We have a perfect seal. So I'm assuming we have to put it back in the press. Yes, we do. I'm like, surely that is not enough pressure for it to be just good to go. And that's it, it's just the phone this time. And looks like there's spring loaded sections that address that area. So we'll do this one more time. Is this loaded? <sighs> this tool's cool. I like this one. Um, that's pretty handy. That's, if I owned a repair shop, this would probably be the only one I would buy, honestly. Okay, there are two screws. So they just give you doubles and triples and quadruples of everything in case you lose them. Those are very tiny screws, so I guess, you know, it's not unprecedented that you might lose them. Okay, so these screws are very interesting because they're, they're like long shafts, but then they're only threaded at the end. Very interesting. Okay, so tighten that all the way down. I'll get the other one in before I torque them. Okay. 
Okay, ready for the click? Good. Torque. Click. Nice. And we're done. In theory, this should turn on. See if it does. It did say that the battery was made in 2020. So it's very possible that it's completely dead. Um, and I'm hoping that's the case because nothing is happening. Let's get a lightning cable, huh? Okay, moment of truth, fingers crossed. Let's plug this back in and push the power button. And, oh no, oh, whew. <laughs> I got a little scared there just for a second. Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. Brand new. Now we get to the weird part. Okay, so it just booted up. Let's see if the touchscreen works. It does. Face ID does not. <laughs> so that's a little spooky because it didn't prompt me to enter the passcode. Mm hmm This is symptomatic of not using genuine parts. So let's check at least if our cameras are going. That they are. Okay, that's good. There's a notification that happened. I'm in do not disturb, so it didn't show up, but it says important battery message. Unable to verify this iPhone has a genuine Apple battery. Health information not available for this battery. Important display message. Unable to verify this iPhone has a genuine Apple display. So that's kind of spooky. Let's call this number because that's what it tells you to do. Once you've completed the repair, as I mentioned in the last video, Apple stores just have the software on hand, but I don't. So we'll see how this experience goes. Welcome to the self-service repair support line. Please note once connected to a live agent, system configuration takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Wow. If the repair performed with a display, battery or camera, please press one. All other repairs do not require system. Hello. Hi. Thank you for calling. Can you confirm the repair that you owe? Did you do? Yes, I did an iPhone 12 mini uh, display and battery replacement. Okay. Uh, okay. Alright, and you said you're all plugged in. Okay, can I get your serial number? Sure. C7. C. Let me just confirm it's the same serial number on your order. Okay. Let me confirm it's the same serial number as on your order. Ha 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 ha. Okay, I can confirm that. Alrighty, uh, I see iPhone 12 mini and then the serial number with a blue plus button next to it. Okay, I just take a second. Okay. Oh wait, okay, I have to, uh, let me see here, I skipped So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna do the uh, diagnostic mode restart, so it's just gonna restart your device. Okay. And then let me know when it's restarted and then another screen should pop up in diagnostic mode. Let me know when it does. That. Okay, will do. That's kind of cool. We get to see a secret mode. Okay, I am now at the diagnostic screen. Okay, from there, you're just going to, uh, so next we're going to tap start diagnostic. Okay. And then you choose your Wi-Fi network that is connected to the internet. Okay. And agree to the terms and conditions. Please confirm when you see wait for support. It now says waiting for support. All right, so we'll now start system configuration. When system configuration is complete, your phone will automatically restart in diagnostic mode. When it does, please press exit diagnostics. Okay. So just please let me know when your phone restarts. All right, will do, thank you. Interestingly, this, this appears to be some sort of like pseudo recovery mode because it did not remember my uh, Wi-Fi credentials, which is the same with a Mac when you reboot that into recovery mode for the first time. So um, this is kind of separate from the main system, interesting. Okay, looks like it's rebooting. So once it gets back to the reboot screen, I have to press exit diagnostics, and then I tell my friend. I don't know what call center he's in, but it is the like the loudest thing ever. There's like screeches on in the background. It's really, it's really weird. Okay, so the phone is rebooting, and once it finishes booting, I have to press exit diagnostics, which I'm gonna do, and I think it's gonna reboot again, and then I tell my friend. Okay, my phone is now at the lock screen. Okay, so you you uh you're out of diagnostic mode. Correct. You restarted. Did you, did you get exit diagnostic? Uh, I did. Yes. Okay, so now that that, that that's um that completes the steps for system configuration, and now it should be ready for use. 
Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I haven't yet dismissed the notifications. So now if we tap them, important battery message, it just takes me to the battery screen, 100%. That's what happens when there's a genuine battery. And if I tap the display message, it just goes to the about screen without any errors. So that's good. I am a little worried about the Face ID assembly because it was not working before. And I think that's because the display wasn't paired, but it might have been that I botched it during my repair. So let's turn this off. Let's turn it back on. Nope, worked great. I'm such a good repairman. So yeah, I mean, this is legit. It works, but it just is weird. All of the kit that they send you, the process of having to call them to authenticate the parts that are theirs, that are genuine, that presumably they know about because he asked me if it matched the serial number of the device that I ordered it for, and he confirmed that yes, it did. So why do I have to call them at all? It's just, the whole thing is, weird and that's about all i can say it's expensive it's weird and it's apple doing it because they have to not because they want to and i guess it's better than nothing but boy there sure are a lot of improvements that can be made over the years oh yeah thanks for watching and as always stay snazzy <laughs>